Good day to you, FCC, and anybody else who might be watching. We are taking a pause for the next number of weeks here from our daily prayers. I want to say thank you to those who have been posting those prayers every day, different people from FCC. Way to go. I trust you've all been watching those and engaging. The reason we're taking a pause is because we're going to replace that time with a daily Advent calendar moment. There'll be 25 of those. We'll open the last one on December 25th. Now, I need to point out, <coughs> you know, we used to have a little advent calendar. We still have it at our house. It's like a little, I don't know, village or something, but it has little doors. You had to find the right door, you know, 1 through 25 for Christmas. And behind each door is some candy. Well, we're not doing candy. We're doing something different, but we're going to open a door every day. And I want to tell you that my original thought for this was just to kind of allude to that and do kind of a virtual calendar. But Pastor Katie and Debbie both thought opening an actual door that was decorated would be cuter. And I'm not sure if they meant it or if I'm being pranked right now, but I'm doing it on the internet. So I hope you don't think it's weird. <laughs> anyway, we're going to look through the Christmas story just uh, every day by looking at a different thing for each day. So day one, let's see what we've got. I think I am being pranked. Is this weird? This is weird. So let's see what's in here. Oh, goodness. It's a, a, a mobile? Mobile? Baby mobile. But we're at the start of the story, not the end, where Jesus is born. So it's not for Jesus. Let's see what the deal is. Also have this fancy piece of paper. I'm pretty sure I'm being punked right now. <clears throat> Luke 1, 5 through 25, the birth of John the Baptist foretold. I'm going to read that to you really quick, and then we'll have a quick time of devotional on that. I promise these will be shorter starting tomorrow. But here's, here's what it says. It says, when Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the line of Aaron. They were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations, and they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of priests, he was chosen to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. Now he must never touch wine or alcohol. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will turn away or turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man of spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn their hearts to the fathers, to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah says, how is that possible? And the angel says, well, since you don't believe me, I'm going to make you mute for a while. And then he goes home after a time, finds out that his wife is pregnant, which is amazing. And Elizabeth says, praise the Lord, how kind he is. He's taken away my disgrace of having no children. Here's the point for that little message today. Zechariah and Elizabeth were anointed, called, blessed by the Lord to be a part of his Work And here's some actions they took that I want to look at really quickly. This is a sermon in like one minute, okay? Number one, they were where they were supposed to be, and they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were serving God. Zechariah wasn't complaining about no sons. Elizabeth wasn't complaining about it. They were continuing to serve. It tells us at the start of the passage that they were righteous, and they obeyed God's commandments and regulations, and he was continuing to serve in the temple, as was his duty and his calling, and in the context of doing what he was supposed to be doing, where he was supposed to be doing it, God spoke and moved and did this miracle of bringing who would become, of course, John the Baptist. That's their son, John the Baptist. <clears throat> Number two, they were people of prayer. Remember, the angel said, we've heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. So kind of goes along with point one, but I just want to add to that. They were also a people of prayer. They continued to pray, continued to trust and ask of the Lord. And number three, they, they quite obviously lived out thankfulness. They maintained their faith. They were past the age of childbearing. I mean, this, they were at the point where it had to be a miracle of God for them to have children. I don't know if they'd given up on that dream or if they continued to pray. Seems like they were still praying for a miracle because the angels said, God has heard your prayers. 
So they're in the right place at the right time, doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're praying and they're living out a life of thankfulness. And all of this puts them right in the center of God's will. And they were able to do their God-given part to, as it says in verse 17, prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. Well, here's the deal. That's our job too. We're here to proclaim the good news. We're here to prepare the people for the next coming of the Lord Jesus when he will come and, and make all things new. And and that is our job, and we need to follow the same roadmap we see here. We need to be doing the right things in the right places at the right times. In other words, we need to do what God has called us to do, to not complain, to not freak out over elections or, uh, or COVID or anything else, and to say, I'm just going to do what God's called me to do, and I'm going to be in the center of God's will. And when we do that, God meets us in that place. We need to pray and pray and pray and pray some more. We need to live out our thankfulness to keep faith even when it's hard. That is your day one message. Merry Christmas. Check us out again tomorrow for door number two.